So today on the bench, we have a scanner. <laughs> it may look like a CB. <laughs> it is. It's a Galaxy DX929. So this is actually an FCC certified uh, radio. But uh, yeah, I call it a scanner and I don't... <laughs> I, it, how else to put it? It is. <laughs> Coax cable goes over to BK1040. Sample comes off to the spectrum analyzer. Now... This is a 1 megahertz bandwidth I have set, so from one edge of the screen to the other, that's 1 megahertz. <laughs> it's scanning, scanning, scanning. Yeah, we've got problems. So, let me pull out a schematic, but yeah, it looks like the uh, PLL is not locking and it's just, it's all over <laughs> the CB, actually... All over the CB band and above, because actually, what I got the center frequency at 27.985, and it's going below, yeah, well below. It's in this into the CB band, but it's also well above too. So, well, let me get some troubleshooting here, and we'll see if we can figure out what's wrong with this critter. I haven't done anything but take the top cover off of it so far. So, let me whip out a schematic, and we'll see what we can find with this little guy. Well, that was easy. <laughs> I knew it had to be having serious PLL problems. Uh, I'm not saying the PLL being bad, but serious problems in the uh, synthesizer circuit. Um, and that's what it was. It was actually an easy problem to find, but it was a serious problem as far as the, the poor PLL and the VCO was concerned. So uh, the absolute first thing I did is, I'd have to pull the service manual out, but I think that's actually the first... Now, actually, I think the first thing you're supposed to do in the alignment on these is check the VCO voltage. I think it's step number two, probably. But you're supposed to uh, check at the PLL on pin 8 for your 10.240 megahertz signal. And you're supposed to adjust to, uh, to reach 10.240. So, that's the first thing I did. Actually, the first thing I did was actually... <laughs> I did check VCO voltage to make sure... And it was... It was high a little bit, but it, nothing that would have affected it to do, do what it was doing. Um, so I stuck a scope probe on pin 8, so PLL chip right down there, and yes, it looked like, actually it looked like I was looking at the phase detector, just negative pulses, and it just, yeah, it is something seriously not right. So it was definitely was not 10.240, so underside of the board, so here's your 10.240 crystal. Um, stuck a scope probe on there, nothing dead silence. So, uh, now, it had a wire soldered or crossed over this can. I don't know why people do that. They think they need to support these things. They're going to fall out of the radio. Um, if you want to do something, just add a dot of glue, not, not corrosive glue, because that's actually the problem. So, this, obviously, is a fairly new radio. I don't mean it's brand new, but I mean it's, you know, it's not like this radio is two or three or four decades old. This radio just goes to prove how horrible that corrosive glue is. A radio as new as this. Here's the crystal I took out. What's missing off the bottom of that? A terminal. The glue oozed underneath of it and just ate one of the leads off of it. That's all that was wrong with the radio. So, yeah, I just can't overstate it enough. <laughs> the most important thing you can do to of any CB radio is get the glue out before it eats your radio from the inside out. <laughs> so they have that glue on these radios poured down around the crystal in between the ceramic filter here and the, and the crystal. That's actually why there's a dental tool here because I actually, after I desoldered the crystal, actually I unsoldered the first lead when I unsoldered the second one, there wasn't anything in the hole, meaning my desoldering tool had sucked the lead out. But yeah, that's because it had corroded off. So, yeah, just that simple. So, you know, what seemingly a lot of times can seem like, oh my God, you know, you go to transmit and it's horrible problems. It can be something as simple as glue ate the lead off of something. So, you know... Um, like I say, I'll, I'll contact the customer now, now that we know it wasn't an expensive fix. It was just a matter of sticking a new 10.240 crystal in it and, uh, see if they want a transceiver alignment done. Um, it's actually fairly close. So I guess it would help if I plug the microphone into the radio, wouldn't it? Yeah, so actually it's, uh, let's see here. Peak 
continuous peak, and I now have <laughs> narrowed the span down on the spectrum analyzer to uh, uh, 10 kilohertz. It's no longer at 1 megahertz. And the transmit frequency is 27, I'm on channel 19, and the tra it's transmitting at 27.185166. So that's actually within specification. So that meets that meets FCC specs. Um, it is off, you know. But, uh, so it is working correctly now, and it's, as you can see, it's stable. It's not, it's not, uh, <laughs> it's not making a 5 to, I don't know, 5 to 800 kilohertz swing, um, like it was before. So... Yep, that's all it was. So there's just a really quick <laughs> troubleshooting and diagnostics on a radio. If you've got one that seems to be transmitting all over the place, one of these radios, um, look down in there. If you see that corrosive glue, um, just jiggle the crystal. Now I couldn't do it with this one because I had this wire on here. But if I, you know, if this wasn't supporting it, I would have been able to just grab it and rock it, and I'd have been able to see that. You know, when I, I'd have been able. To, you know, the crystals will normally rock. You can rock them back and forth this direction, but you can't rock them this direction because over the length, you know, the distance between those pins, it's solid. And if this wire wasn't attached, I'd have just been able to grab it and see that I could rock it in that direction. And I wouldn't even need to unsolder it to see that there was a lead eaten off of it. Um, and the other thing is, I had mentioned about this wire. This wire should not be on here. Uh, the reason for that is the manufacturer didn't do that. Now, you will see some radios... Uh, with the crystals bridged to something, other times you will not. If the manufacturer did not grant, because that's that's actually the problem you're you're creating. When you gr when you solder a piece of wire to this can, and then solder it to like an IF transformer can, the can is grounded. This crystal can was not designed to be grounded. When the engineers designed this radio, they didn't design this crystal can to be grounded. When you ground it, you change its capacitance. Shoot, just adding actually that piece of wire there adds inductance and capacitance inside you know, this crystal. It's, very, you know, it's just a piece of quartz cut at a very precise angle. You know, I'm not a crystal manufacturer, but I know you know, based the basic process of it. But there's a lot of specifications to a crystal. And if you go doing stuff like this, adding a wire and then attaching it to a can that's grounded to the DC board ground, you're going to change its its capacitance. Because crystals, have, there's a lot of specifications to a crystal. When you order custom cut crystals, it's not like you just say, I need a 10.240 crystal. They're going to ask you... What's the, you know, what's the load impedance on it? What capacitance is it? You know, there's a lot of specs they need to know when they make these things. And grounding this can changes the specification of this crystal. So this crystal I stuck in there will not be getting grounded. It will not be getting that. I will put a small dot of non-corrosive glue <laughs> in between the crystal filter and the body here to support it. But I will not be grounding its body because, like I say, that actually changes the specifications of this crystal. So, And you don't know what that is. So you just randomly go putting ground wires on crystal cans. You don't know what that's going to do to the stability of your radio. You may change the capacitance enough that it's, it's shift. Yeah, it just... Don't do it. What you should do, remove the glue. So there you go. Really quick video on a very easy repair.